Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Tooth and Scrubs Gaming. Thank you so much for joining me today in Meeple Station. If you haven't checked out any of my previous videos on this game, please do, because this one is now getting very story intense. To just review where we are at in the last episode, we had built our first spacecraft and headed out from our Tooth One Station to the planet Aluvarico where we found, interestingly enough, a crashed spacecraft, but there had never been a manned mission to that planet by our meeples. So we landed and took a peek and uh, found a ship in a nearby cave that had an ancient sarcophagus and brought that back and did a little research and found out that it was about 8,000 years old and there was a meeple inside it. So our scientists figured out where they think that spaceship came from and we sent Marimba and the Finch back out to that, and he found a hulking, massive ship that had a lot of damage, uh, and it must have drifted there from somewhere. So now, uh, obviously our friend Chug here on planet Savin, where we originally are from, or so we think, uh, is telling us what's going to happen. So let's see what Chug has to say. This changes everything. Toothbud. What you found is making some major waves here at home. They're already planning a major joint effort expedition between Tooth and Scrubs, the Savini government, the Lakote Initiative, Pickle and Pickaxe Mining Company, and Vigorously Applied Sciences to research the artifact craft. Science teams have already been assembled of the best minds Savin has to offer. It's good you called this one home. This craft is of global interest now. I don't think we could have handled this one by ourselves anyway, Chug. It's for the best. Probably would have just gotten in trouble later for handling something or other not up to everyone else's standards once they found out. Anyhow, they've already put a launch together. Should go up in a few days, take a few more to get uh, the artifact. I can't wait to see what they find. Right there with you, Chug. I know you are. All right, Toothbud. I'll contact you when we have something new to tell you. All right, Chug. Talk to you in a few days. So it sounds like uh, our um, we're going to find out what's going on with the uh, that craft way out there. Um, so while we're waiting on that, we need to go ahead and connect some power to our newly built vending machine, food vending machine over here, just to make sure we're getting enough food out to our meeples. So hopefully Hacksaw comes over here and puts that in place. We got plenty of, plenty of, uh, hydroponics growing some vegetables for us. I want lax dining. It seems there are not enough chairs and tables for all your meeples. Plan on doing anything about that? Uh, we've got eight chairs and tables here for everyone to use. So hopefully now that we have two vending machines, they, uh, that's dispensing enough meals for everyone. I think that was kind of our initial, initial issue, initial problem. Uh, so let's, um, let's see what's going on here. So we got this poop battle that's still kind of going on. I wish our janitors would, you know, be more efficient or less of this would be generated because it just seems to be all over the place but that's that's okay i guess um how are we doing up here lacking dining i don't know why it keeps telling us we're lacking dining we got obviously plenty of chairs maybe it's because feather is an officer and he wants his own dining room use public dining um let's see well let's go ahead and trade with the lukov initiative and see what they got uh we'll buy some aluminum off them and then let's sell them some steel since we got plenty of steel. We got almost 400 steel. So we'll sell them about 50 steel uh, since that's worth nine credits each. So let's go ahead and actually let's sell them 100 steel. Get ourselves a nice little bankroll going here. So if we need to uh, send a tribute to anyone or buy anything, we got plenty of that. There we go. So we sold them 100 steel at nine each. Um, since we got plenty of carbon, actually let's go ahead and buy carbon and then sell diamonds. We'll go ahead and sell three of our diamonds since those are 32 each. And that gives us a little over 2,000 credits. And that should be plenty for us to continue to operate on. Okay, let's get rid of that and see what happens. We might need to make an officer's mess now that we researched um, the restricted areas. All right, so we finished that research. And we got no research right now. 
So I guess that's a, a good problem to have. There's the finch rolling back in. Keeps flashing so we can't build anything else. Um, we could build an ore detector and that'll tell us what's nearby. But I don't think we're quite ready for that. We're still getting the lax dining message. Um, let's see if we can find the the security measure that we we unlocked. I'm not seeing it. If you guys know, leave a comment down below for me to find it. Is it in here somewhere? I'm uh, still not seeing it. Did I miss it up here? The ejector, water tank, that, that, that. Um, okay, so that was modules. Let's check furniture again. It's not in furniture unless it was at the very top. Nope, not in furniture. Power fuel. It's not in power fuel. Is it in structure? Is there like a door we got? A specific like security door? I'm not seeing any security doors. Tinted glass. Glass hall. Reinforced hall. Airlock. Docking clamps. Basic door. All right, let's 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 go click on one of our basic doors and see if we can manipulate it that way. Oh, is it under utilities? Well, I'll have to look that up. You guys let me know in the comments below on how we can create a secure area for our um, officer's mess because uh, that seems to be the issue I think we're having here. Got another trade ship rolling in. Let's see what they got. They, uh, ooh, see, good thing we stole, sold some steel early, um, because now it's only down to three from Vigril Applied Sciences. Um, we are out of carbon, so we'll go ahead and buy a little bit of carbon from them, because we probably used a lot of that to get our diamonds up to snuff, to our minimum we set. Um, almost out of aluminum ore, how much have we got? 57 aluminum. Hmm... Let's go ahead and buy some of the meals off them. Get some fine meals and lavish meals. We'll sell a little bit of fish. and Ooh, we got a lot of vegetables, so we'll sell some of our vegetables as well. Just so we keep that bank roll nice and high. So we'll get that down to 20 fish. Oops, and then we'll sell probably about 40 of our vegetables. So we've got some money rolling in from that as well. All right, there we go. Lax dining. Yeah, I know we're lacking dining. Um, I wish I could figure out. I'm going to keep looking. Is there like a security door? Oh, Chug is coming back in. Savin to Tooth Station. Over. We read you, Savin. Go ahead. That's funny. Well, the expedition has been at the site for about a week now. Turns out you're not actually speaking to Savin right now, Toothbud, but Stray Haven as the ancients apparently called our home planet over time must have been just become saving the linguistics linguistics figured out most of the language and came up with that one over a week from what we're pulling off the artifacts data banks we're all still reeling from that one stray haven so it's true we're not from here it would appear so. I can't believe that the tellers of all meeples were right. That's not all, Toothbud. So the craft came to Varako totally by accident, some kind of emergency. It's not clear what exactly happened, but the damage to the spacecraft is clear enough. They were some sort of colony ship bound for another system entirely. They couldn't fix the, their drives. Their drives bookmark uh that one for the moment they've sent out escape pods to every planet in the system looking for somewhere they could survive the slow death of their ship and the pod we found was one of the poor sods who was sent to one of the non-viable planets right on the forehead tooth bud i can't imagine the bravery or the desperation that led those meeples on those one-way trips but at least one pod was successful saving feels like Feels dumb to say that now, Strayhaven. They fled to Strayhaven 1,400 years ago, Toothbud. It was so difficult to survive here that they never regained the ability to return to their ship and fix the drive. They were just stuck here and no one ever found them. Not until now. Where did they come from? The drives. Sweet panic-inducing hindquarters, Captain. Those drives. The ancients were definitely more advanced than we are now. Toothbud, this ship has some sort of gravi gravity manipulation drives that bend space around the ship, space time around the ship. 
You heard me right. Inside the ship lays the holy grail of propulsion, the faster than light travel. So, to answer your question, they could have been literally from anywhere. Please tell me we're already trying to reverse engineer this. Even better, no need. There were fully technical schematics in the engineering section. It's not even built out of anything too exotic. It just involves some core concepts of physics we did not understand yet. This stuff was just everyday technology for the ancients. As you can imagine, this has set the scientific world on fire already. It is a huge leap past roadblocks in understanding understanding we've been stuck on for a long time now. Please tell me we're going to build one of these. We're going to build one of these, Toothbud. The Cologne Initiative, the Pickle and Pickaxe Mining Company, and Vigorously Applied Sciences are also going to build one of these. I've already sent the schematics for one super luminal lingress drive, or SI drive as they're calling it, to your data banks, which leads me to the next bit. Please tell me the next bit. We don't know where we come from as a species. We don't know where the ship came from. This is directly before it came to Verico. Verico. We pulled the origins from the memory of the navigational computer, a system known to us as Rungora. Rungora is a B-type main sequence star located about 32 light years away from Vakora. Please tell me we get to personally go there. You're going to get to personally go there. You found this thread to follow in the first place. We want you to continue your search for our past. As far as you'll follow it, Captain, it would be my honor. That's good to hear, Toothbud. Well, we are, uh, let's see, we all have our work cut out for us. Start preparing the station in what ways you can. We can tell you what you're going to find on the other side. We can't tell you what you're going to find on the other side of this, if this thing works. A little surplus of resources wouldn't hurt. All right, I'll let you get to it. Time to get building. All right, so our objective is to research and build an SI drive. So 250 unlocks teleporter network. Uh, all right, so we'll go ahead and get that going, and we need to probably build up our food supplies and make sure we got plenty of water and ice and everything else we will need to survive on the other side of who knows what. Those, <laughs> those are a little hard to read. Sometimes their sentence structure or order of words are, are weird. I don't know if you guys have picked up on that. Usually I'm pretty good at reading things, but I guess... Uh, Guess I'm not that good on reading that type of stuff. All right, so let's. I'm still trying to figure out how we can build a private mess, um, and I'm not seeing. I know we're lacking dining. Um, I'm not seeing any way how to set specific areas. Research is doing that. We've got that. I wonder if like I create a specific dining room that will change things. Let's go ahead and do that just for funsies. So let's go build and we'll put in a graded hall wall and let's just go like this and like this. Why can't I build that there? Can I put a door there? Put our door there and then let's put in another hall wall there. Okay, and let's see if we can mark this as a private private dining area, private dining room. We gotta build that one more hall. Come on, Hexel, should have finished that before you went to the bathroom. Yeah, I know, lax dining. All right, once he builds that, let's try and see if we can make this its own thing. Which I don't know how we we do. Um, tinted glass door, basic hall. Still not seeing anything. Maybe I'm just blind. Again, if you guys know how to do this, leave this in the comments below. While you're doing that, don't forget to like the video and uh, subscribe to Tooth and Scrubs Gaming Channel. Because that would make us, uh, you know, shows me that you guys like the videos I'm making and it gives me the the energy and the, the want to continue to make more videos for everyone. While I sit here and struggle to figure out how to set this as its own area. I still can't figure it out. Okay, that's fine. Let's see what we can do on the trade side of things. Um, we'll sell some more vegetables. And then let's sell some fish as well. Even though we probably should start stockpiling some of that. We've got plenty of iron ore. Um, go ahead and start stocking up on aluminum ore again. We are out of carbon. So let's go ahead and buy their carbon there. 
and then that will be enough. Let's see, we should probably keep mining that ice. Is there anything where we can get ice and carbon? There we go, let's go ahead and toggle that for mining. So we get ice, carbon, and silicone if we mine that asteroid over there. All right, so he's still angry that we can't set his own dining room up. Still can't figure out how to do that. Um, hmm, okay, whatever. So we're just waiting on the SI drive to finish researching. Uh, so I will see you guys when we finish researching that. Alrighty, friends, so we did a little expanding and Hacksaw just built our SI drive. So let's see what Chug has to say here. Tooth One Station, this is saving over. Tooth One here, this is Tooth Bud. Captain, we received word that you've completed testing of the SI drive. It's passed our battery of tests and there's theoretically been successful in targeting the Rungora system with its navigational computer. Well, Captain Toothbud, it seems it would seem the only step forward from here is the giant leap variety. It would appear so, Chug. Toothbud, I'm sure this won't be the first time this has dawned on you, but I don't think anyone just come out anyone's just come out and said it either. Once you fire that drive, well, no use to beating around the bush. You will be on your own entirely, Toothbud. There will be no meaningful way that we can communicate with you or intervene should anything happen once you're outside the VAR Vicaro system. It has occurred to me at least several dozen times. I'm trying not to dwell on it too much. That's a solid tactic, Toothbud. I want you to know everyone down here has complete faith in you and your crew. We're confident that you're the right meeple for the job and you'll be meeting any challenges you encounter out there. No pressure, Chug. Oh, Toothbud, I can't begin to imagine the pressure you're under. Look, just a piece of advice. I know the other expedition stations are all private endeavors now that the SI drives are all built. There's no telling how many receptive, no telling how receptive some of them will be, but maybe it won't be such a bad idea to go out of your way to try and build some kind of working relationship with other factions throughout your journey. You're the only other help any of your any of you are going to be able to get out there in the black. Good advice, Chug. Thank you. It's out there somewhere, Toothbud. Our past, our lost history of, as a species. I hope with all my heart you find it. Thank you, Chug. And don't worry too much. This won't be the last you hear from us. I promise you that. I'll hold you to that. Well, I suppose this is goodbye for now, Toothbud. Good luck and Godspeed, Captain. All right, so our hyperdrive is charged. Now that you have a hyperdrive, you will need to make sure it's charged in order to use it. Connect it to your power supply and toggle whether or not charging by clicking on it. So let's go ahead and hook this bad boy up to electricity, and it's already hooked up. So that is good. So it's going to start charging for us. Some other things I did while you guys, or while I was off screen and you guys weren't watching, I built a little bit more storage here. And I also pimped out an officer's mess. I still can't figure out how to get Feather to use it. He keeps using this one over here, but at least it stopped uh, telling me there's not enough um, dining space. I upgraded the walls, put some glass walls in. Figured out that if you build bulkhead doors, that's where your clearances come from. So you can tell who gets in and get, can't get in. So I selected officers and janitors to keep it clean. I upgraded it to glass tables and glass chairs, put down some decorative hall tiles just to make this mess the best mess it can be i also upgraded feathers bedroom i moved him from here to over here where he has a glass bed and a nice wardrobe to use and now his room is satisfactory um so we'll probably continue to improve that room for him since he is our officer and we want to make sure he gets the best possible so he doesn't go on a weird killing spree I also turned Marimba into a miner for a little bit just to kind of help us get some more resources. As you can see, um, Feather here is still using public dining, um, but Marimba's out there helping us get some more resources before we jump here. So let's go back down to our SI drive. It is not charging, so let's go ahead and left click on that to start charging. Um, so it is uh, charged up and we are ready to initiate the hyper jump. So, so far in this episode, we've kind of, um, we didn't really play a role in it, but we read a lot of story. 
where all the initiatives, all the groups went out to that spaceship we found in the previous episode. They did a lot of research and found these jump drives that we can build our SI drive. So we researched that and we uh, went ahead and built one and it's ready and nice and charged for us to use. Like this video if you've enjoyed the story so far in Meeple Station. I certainly have. It's a little bit of a plot. I, I don't want to say plot twist, but certainly a little bit different than I expected it. Comment below on what you, you, you think has happened so far. If you like it, you don't like it. Uh, comment what you think is going to happen in the future. And obviously, don't forget to subscribe to Tooth and Scrubs Gaming. I want to make sure you're getting all this great content on time in an orderly fashion. Thank you so much for stopping by today with us in Meeple Station, and we'll see you next time when we initiate the Hyper Jump. <laughs>